Put yourself in this situation. You're eight years old. You are home alone. There are two grown men armed outside your house trying to forcibly enter it. You have a rifle, but the thing you don't know yet is that you're horribly out. Gunned. What is up guys, Maccabee Speed coming at you. Now, if you're familiar at all with the Home Alone story, and I think most of us who grew up in the 80s and 90s are, it was actually a wildly successful home invasion attempt that Kevin was able to go ahead and repel with very, very, very basic tools, right? Today, we're gonna go ahead and explore what tools he used, what actual impact would have happened on that target, and what would have happened had he brought more gun to the fight, right? We have a few different air gun platforms to go ahead and test against the effectiveness of this Red Rider BB gun, and we're gonna go ahead and see exactly where that line from hobby target shooting crosses over into the true defensive tool category. Stick around, it's gonna be a good one, guys. Now, before we go ahead and get any further, I know there's going to be some purists that are going to say, dude didn't have a Red Rider. He had a pump action BB gun, an even older one than the one that's in my hands currently. And you're right. You're totally right. But they do make about the same velocity, which in this case is about 325 feet per second with a 4.5 millimeter BB. Now, that's exactly what we have in here. We have the old, you know, shake and bake, ready to rock and roll lever action plinker here. And this has served the backyard shooters for very, very, very long time. Let's see exactly what kind of energy and impact this brought to the table for Kevin on that fateful night. All right, guys, so just like I was expecting on that one, the initial baseline results there, I wasn't expecting too uh, explosive of an impact. That's exactly what we saw. Let's look at it on the film here. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's slow enough of a projectile at 318 feet per second measured on the chronograph to actually be able to see the projectile in the footage. Check that out, guys. And then it hits, and it does actually make a small ripple on the gel target. Look at that. Definitely not enough to stop somebody, though. That's, that's not enough to stop a motivated attacker. I'd say when most people think of a pellet gun or an air rifle, one of the main things that probably comes to their mind initially, first and foremost, got to be that brake barrel style power plant, right? A lot of people, a lot of people move from the Red Rider to the brake barrel action, and that's where we're going to go ahead and test at this point. We have the Big Cat 1200. This is one of the very first guns that was ever debuted on my channel ever, and it's still here to this day. I think that even though this only crawnied out at about 13 foot pounds, 14 foot pounds, last time we had this about, uh, over the crawny in 2022, it's still a good average as far as what an old gun like Kevin found on that shelf from his older brother would have been able to bring to the table, right? It's an old BB gun, it's an old brake barrel. It's kind of an apples to apples test. Let's go ahead and see what happens to that dummy. All right, guys, plain as day. You can see that red fire tip is absolutely lit up in dude's forehead here. And now the interesting thing is, I think I do see the pellet in there, but I don't think it's cracked the skull. And I don't see any leakage of any kind. I actually think I see that pellet right there. So now that was really interesting. I actually expected significantly more impact and damage from the 12 foot pounds of, uh, of energy they were able to, to muster with this break action rifle. Now it's only a 4.5 millimeter. So it's only 1.7 millimeters in diameter and with only 12 foot pounds behind it. I mean, I know that's like the, the UK limit, but uh, I don't really push come to shove. I expected more from 12 foot pounds didn't really look like penetrated the skull, even though that round did make a nice splash as it flattened out. Definitely kind of lackluster in the sense that I was thinking that this guy might actually go ahead and penetrate the skull, but it looks like it was unable to go ahead and do so. Let's get into our next test. All right, guys, so this is where we really start to go ahead and break into the larger energy stash of our testing today. We've got the Deanna Stormrider, and it's got a really cool chassis on it. Now, obviously, the chassis won't give it any more extra energy, but it does make it look tactical, right? Kevin might have uh, had more self-confidence if he felt cool about that, which was in his hands. And holding this, I do definitely feel cool, even though it's only a 22 caliber plinker. Now, this thing brought about 30 foot-pounds on average with the same red fire round that we just saw tested in 177 caliber. 177 to 22, 
not that big of a jump, but the energy level that we're going to be seeing is 30 plus foot pounds. So let's go ahead and take a look at exactly what 30 foot pounds would have been able to accomplish for Kevin that night. All right, guys, now without a doubt, that's my favorite impact so far because that's a clean pass through all the way through. Um, pretty rad to be honest, right? Full flatten out. Entrance, big splash on impact. And that looks like a, a basal skull exit wound pretty crazy pretty crazy is there a hole there oh there is it's right there uh, oh it feels gross it feels crunchy that feels gross very gross very gross and then back here on our board we have almost no energy left almost no energy left to retain on the board this is where we hit it's like a piece of green goo stuff on there but that's about it so instantly right away way more frontal splash, 100% way more frontal splash from 30 foot pounds of energy. We're seeing significantly more actual matter fly off and be deflected backwards off the target. We're also seeing something, to be honest, kind of shocking here. Check this out. In really slow motion, you can see that pellet penetrates and there's a length of time right there. Pellet exits the back of the skull. So even though it didn't do so at a high velocity, the fact of the matter was it was still transforming from a pellet shape to a lead pancake shape. It was still moving with enough velocity to move things in the way of it out of the way. And it penetrated all the way through the back of the target. Almost all of that 30 foot pound of energy payload definitely dumped onto that ballistic dummy, given the fact that it simply bounced off the board behind it. This is the round, guys. So as you can see, it's got real smooth edges, nothing real sharp, right? Which means it, it didn't really hit with a lot of velocity or violence, right? It just absolutely retained all of its mass, flattened out into a lead pancake, and then proceeded to exit the back of the skull. No question in my mind, absolutely, at the very least, incapacitating shot, Mark kicked backwards 100% on his heels and did not, uh, did not get back up quickly, if he got back up at all. So once you crest from the Springer that you've had in your collection for 12 to 20 years and start moving into the PCP stuff, even the lower, lower power PCPs, as far as like what's actually out there, 30 foot pounds, got the job done on that dummy in this case. Now, granted, it does look like this might be more of a composite skull structure, so I don't know that it's actually as hard as true bone, but I think it's giving us a good representation of exactly what we could expect, even though it's not a direct analog. All right, guys, now this is where we really start to break into the serious energy end of our testing. We have the 25 caliber Benjamin Marauder absolutely beautiful legacy style air gun ready to rock and roll this was my very 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 first 25 caliber pcp and it is gorgeous still i can't say enough good things about it it's got all the little knickknacks uh, and uh, bells and whistles that it came from the factory with i even still have the scope that was bundled with it so this one has a lot of history on this channel it's also a very special rifle to me personally because it is the physical rifle that i defended my own home from in a home invasion situation less than 10 years ago. So this is a recent event, actually unfolded, actually protected myself and my family with this rifle. I think that's all the credibility it needs to go ahead and be tested with its uh, competitors today. So let's see how the 25 caliber polymag does against the competitors that we have today. All right, dudes, 100%. That's the most devastating impact that we've had. You could really start to see that center punch style hole in the head there. And then on the back side, you've definitely got that much larger, more violent exit channel here as well. And you can see just by the board itself that it's carrying more energy as well. So we've got the first impact right here next to it. And that's a very small indentation. And then this guy basically wadded up hardcore. 
That's a projectile, gents. So that is the kind of energy that I would expect from a quarter bore PCP air gun like the, Benj like the Benjamin Marauder. Typically, this rifle with the Predator polymag ammunition used will make anywhere between 38 and 50 foot pounds of energy, depending on your tune, the pressure you're shooting at, a whole bunch of different things go into making the actual number, but it's between 38 and 50 foot pounds. So it's more than anything that we've tested so far up to this point. Additionally, I think we saw that translated on a dummy. I mean, just look at this. Compared to the 22, way more splash, way more initial impact. And now we're starting to see that like laser bore style hole where you're actually getting a good strong penetration through the skull. It also went all the way through the back of that skull and imprinted the round shape onto the pine itself. Didn't penetrate the pine, didn't stick in the pine, but you did get a good splash. Let's check it out. Pretty monstrous. Predator Polymag in this case did exactly what it was advertised to do. This is the Predator Polymag comparatively. Next to the 22 caliber red fire. Pretty similar in size to be honest. The 22 versus the 25, very, very, very little actual diameter difference, but the weight is just sizably more on the 25 cal and it's still performing the same as the lighter comparative round here. All right, guys, this is where we really go ahead and take the energy and turn it up to the moon. We, well, as far as air guns are concerned anyways, 30 caliber SF-30 standard, basically the HPSS that was put out for a long time by AEA, but this one's refined a little bit. It has a regulator. It makes a little bit more power. All the good things you kind of hope for from a more precision air gun like the AEA SF. This is making anywhere between 44 and 55 foot pounds of energy depending on ammunition used with the predator polymag and 30 caliber you're looking at about 50 foot pounds of energy for most of the fill on this rifle you get about 50 shots because it's regulated and getting about 50 foot pounds of energy per shot so this really comes in as at around uh half the energy roughly half the energy of a 22 lr and we're going to go ahead and see exactly what we can get out of it on this ballistic dummy let's get it guys By far the most profound display so far, 100%. Big skull blowout on the interior as far as that initial impact is concerned. Also, 100% pass through. You can see that coming right out this side above the, above the ear. And then Buika actually embedding in the pine with enough power to stay where it was, uh, where it impacted pull it out of here oh it's stuck in there i'm gonna need a knife all right now honestly i did not expect any of the results that i just got first off i have never seen in my life a 30 caliber pellet get this large that's massive that's absolutely massive for a 30 caliber pellet to, sp to spread out and still retain the mass that this thing retained that's impact energy devastation on target comparatively to the 22 caliber this is the smallest one we've shot so far it's an actual pellet round This passed all the way through, this passed all the way through and had to be dug out with a screwdriver. I'm telling you, 22 cal PCP looks like that line where Marv just wouldn't be getting back up. That's where the defensive tools really start with these things. Compared to the 25 caliber, it's a little bit closer, but it's still just not the same as the expansive energy that the 30 caliber brings to the table with that heavier round. All right, guys, I'm really excited about this next offering because it's the most powerful offering that we have to bring to the table, as well as the only one that's in a traditional firearm style caliber. We have the nine millimeter 357 ever potent, ever amazing Terminator Gen 2. And it's a super Terminator, guys. So this one's making about 165 foot pounds of energy with the Predator Polymag in 35 caliber nine millimeter, right? What is a super Terminator? For all you guys who aren't into the air gun scene, uh, it's probably gonna sound like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, but it's got the large 700cc carbon fiber tank, courtesy of the fact that we have an S45 valve in this guy, which not only boosts the power, but also allows you to run all the way up to 4,500 PSI. Now that we're through the mumbo jumbo, all down in a nutshell, more power than a 22 LR and shipped to my doorstep, courtesy of Terry Fox, all those years ago, still rocking the Fox air power, 
uh, Terminator 9mm. This thing's been amazing in my collection up to this point. I want to see exactly what we could do on that dummy today. All right, dudes. So that's even more dramatic than we saw with the previous 30 caliber offering. And it looks like it's gone all the way through this half inch board, three quarter inch board. Yeah, through and through on this three quarter inch board. Let's find the round. The thing that really sucks to me right now is the fact that it looks like the high speed footage actually missed the shot on this one. So the only thing I could really do for you guys is flip this thing back around to a full frontal assault and just blast them in the forehead and see if we get a better shot out of it. Just absolutely blowing it out. Zombie don't stand a chance. All right, boys, if that ain't what you came to see, then don't subscribe, bros. That's good to me. That looked really, really good on the, on the high speed footage. And it looks like we really did get that full energy dump that we were looking for. It seems like the cross section from front to back is a little bit wider as opposed to the left to right penetration. And it soaked up a little bit more of the energy here. Let's see if we can pick this out. Oh yeah, we can. Rad dude. Nine millimeter, 25, 22. All right guys, this is the part that I'm really interested in seeing. The after action, oh it feels gross feels gross holy oh, crumply feels all splintery and gross oh dude that thing feels raunchy bro like oof the shatter fact oh yeah it feels like a broken eggshell inside of some goo oh yeah it just feels like a gooey broken eggshell man that's gross that's gross so what actually happened to okay so we got Orbital fractures. This isn't a real skull. This is obviously a 3D printed skull. And it looks like the blood stuff inside the brain, the brains inside have kind of congealed. But honestly, I think this target proved exactly, exactly, exactly what I think a lot of people already know. That there's some serious energy behind this stuff. I thought I was going to get through the entire filming session with no foibles, but it just wasn't the case. Roll the tape. Okay, now as you can see here, uh, I do everything that I'm supposed to as far as like turning it and making sure I give myself the freshest target possible on something that's been shot five times. And uh, I don't put any ammunition in the breech. So what we see here is actually a full discharge, air only, no projectile. And it still managed to peel the flesh off the back of dude's dome. The second shot here, totally good impact, totally good everything, but my skills with the high speed camera so far, not that great. So I did miss half the shot, roll tape, boom, splash, penetration, pass through, hole in the board. Absolutely missed the beginning of that shot. That's probably where the good stuff was too, right? So all I can really do for you guys at this point, having seen the rest of them go so well, shoot it again, right? Turn it face forward, see what we can get out of it. Wow. Now that is what I was looking for footage wise. Did not expect it to be quite that explosive based on the fact that this is an air gun instead of a firearm. But man, look at that. Boom, temporary cavity established. Huge energy. This is the most intact round I was able to recover. This is the second shot that didn't pass all the way through the board. This thing is 12.15 millimeters in diameter right now. So you're getting more than 30% expansion from nine millimeters to over 12 millimeters diameter with this guy. Let's compare it to the 30 caliber. This, this, is, this is wild. 35, 30. All right, guys, seems to be a great place to go ahead and end today's video, but if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. You want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe for more. With that notifications button, you can stay current on the channel as well as when these videos come out. If you really like what you saw today, breaking down the actual data-driven limits of what air guns are truly capable of, make sure you share it so somebody else can see it, and I'll catch you boys in the next one.